Hey guys, uh, just a quick tip today on how to export uh, from Ableton uh, to get your stuff mixed by a professional mix engineer or by anyone uh, in Pro Tools. And so today I'm just going to take you through just a quick couple of quick tips about how to do that properly. Generally, whenever I um, get a, a client sending me a mix, I'll generally have to talk them through this, so that's why I'm going to do this video is a couple of quick steps. Um, certain things um, may be obvious, certain things may be not, so let's have a look at it. Okay, so if I'm going to get a mix um, from another program like Ableton, like Logic, that kind of stuff, uh, you need to basically make sure that everything's going to work and lines up perfectly. So what I do is I generally save a new iteration of whatever that mix is. Say we've got one here with Ableton of a track that we've done. Now you want to make sure everything's got the same start point. The finish point doesn't matter as much, but the same start point. So what that means is if you can, you consolidate the regions or it'll do that when you export anyway, but make sure you have exactly the same start point, um, generally from zero and with Ableton that's generally pretty good. The compatibility um, going to Pro Tools is pretty easy. So you want to have, have the regions all at the same start point, um, which will be pretty good if you're going to export all the tracks as files as individual tracks anyway. So next thing you need to do is make sure that the file format is compatible with whatever's working in Pro Tools. I mix 32-bit float at 48k. Um, Otherwise, I'll have to convert it. So if your, if your session is in 44.1, see if you can um, export it to 48K. Uh, sometimes that can call, cause a problem with tuning and the like, so that might be a bit of something you need to watch out for. Uh, as far as headroom, I don't mind 24-bit. 24 24-bit 24 still works in a 32-bit float environment. Um, so sending it as 24-bit um, is actually preferable than sending it to me as a 32-bit float, but either can work. Uh, just make sure um, a lot of these programs, if you haven't done this before, the default settings are set at 44.1 and sometimes can be 16 bit as well so that's worth noting okay so let's go and have a look at a session and exactly how we're going to export it so first and foremost what we do is we've got the same start point here and all the set we've saved this as a new iteration now for all the bits that have muted here it's these will come out as empty tracks so there's a couple of options um, especially with these tracks generally delete all the stuff that's unnecessary all the superfluous stuff like these tracks uh, that tambourine shouldn't be mixed, missed there but generally delete all those is a good way to go and then you're only left with the tracks that you're actually going to be working with uh, next thing you know obviously make sure when you're exporting you're exporting at the top line here um, that's really really important and essentially what you want to do is then go up to this file and export audio and video right now these are the settings so what happens also when you're exporting uh, Ableton's one of the few programs that exports all the auxiliary tracks which are the ones down here um, that can be helpful generally when I actually want to get a track exported to me I, I want um, let's just go back for a second. Generally, when I get a, a track sent to me for mixing, I always, usually ask for what's called dry stems. So you can get dry stems and wet stems. That's a terminology you need to know. Um, essentially, wet stems means that there's um, things like you know compression or EQ on a lot of them, and dry stems means that you've taken er all the effects out and you've only got the instruments and whatever's been recorded. Generally, I like dry stems because it's the reason why you're sending it to me to mix, so that's definitely something that needs to be um, that's worth looking at. So if you can generally send dry stems, some of these EQs might be really relevant, like this one, but generally on the whole, turn off most of your EQs, um, and unless there's things like delays, which are really, really relevant and part of a special effect, um, and then I'd ask you to give me both a wet, which is one with the delay and a dry one because then I can sync it. Okay, so now let's go to the exporting. We come up here, we go to export audio and video, and you need to get top here. Instead of going straight to the master, you want all those individual tracks. Make sure that essentially the render is starting at 1 1 or wherever it is, that can start later in your session if you want. Um, my sample rate is 48k, but this is where you're selecting the sample rate. Um, turn normalizing off and um, also the convert to mono and those kind of things. You could convert to mono if you wanted to, but um, generally stereo tracks, I can split them into mono and Pro Tools anyway. Um, down here, I generally choose a WAV file instead of AIF or FLAC. Uh, WAV is generally seen as universally accepted um, on both PC and Mac and generally industry standard. Uh, bit depth, I've chosen 24. You can export it at 32, but I usually like to um, get 24 bit depth, bit depth off clients because um, then I'll be mixing in 32-bit float. We don't need the MP3 encoder on, and your dither options just keep it triangular, or you can leave it as no dithering. It doesn't really matter. Dithering on or off is kind of not that important because I'm still going to dither when I go and send it to master or when I master it. Um, the other thing is we're not using a video encoder, so we leave that off. 
that's all pretty good. So then we just hit the export button. It'll then give us a location. Uh, now make sure Ableton doesn't actually rename every single file. So you need to make sure that essentially we're just going to call this track. We're going to call this passion is the track. We've created a folder. So make sure you've got a folder created into and you just hit save. Now, as I said, Ableton's one of the few ones that it will also give you a track for all your um, individual reverbs and the like. Um, so that's quite good. But also we've turned off most of the other stuff as far as um, the extra processing. So we are good to hit save and these will give me dry stems. Okay. So look, that was um, a quick little that was a quick little run through on how to export from Ableton. It was all just the basics. Um, it can get a lot more complicated, but those are a couple of the points that I think are really important when you're trying to send something out to a mix engineer. Most people, or a lot of mix engineers, will mix in Pro Tools. I certainly do, and um, I try and separate the mixing um, process and the creating process. That's why often I write in Ableton and then export it to Pro Tools or something else like that. So hopefully that was helpful, and I will see you next time.